وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى in a very summarized concise إن شاء الله تعالى مانا I want to speak about قيام رمضان the Salah known as Salat al-Taraweeh in Ramadan. I want to speak about a dis- the description of Salat al-Taraweeh and Qiyam al-Layl. And I also want to talk about some rulings related to that, inshallah ta'ala. And I'll be doing all of that in one sit, bi kareem So all of it will be in this video. If it's long, then inshallah ta'ala bear with me, bi al kareem The points are inshallah ta'ala going to be in points, bi al kareem to the point Evidences, references will be given, inshallah ta'ala. So students of knowledge, talabatul ilm, uh, people who love to study and learn, this video, inshallah ta'ala, will help you. And the ammatul nas, the general masna, listen to it, inshallah ta'ala, and take in the information, because in there, there are points that also concern you, bi'idnillahi uh, al-kareem. Salatul tarawih, it is a prayer that is prayed uh, in the month of Ramadan. And it was called Salatu at Tarawih because Salatu fil Jama'a fi Layali Ramadan, it's Tarawih. Okay? And the reason to that is because Yastariyuna bayna kulli taslimataini. After every taslim, two taslims, the people, what do they do? They relax. After every two taslims, the people relax. And then they what? And then they carry on the prayer. So remember, they pray two, the people they pray four, they relax, and they pray another four. And that's how the Salah is. So it's also it can be considered Salatul Tarawih because it brings raha, it brings tranquility and ease to the people's hearts, the believers. They fasted the whole entire day, they've broken their fast, and now they've prayed Salatul Maghrib, and then they prayed Isha, and now they're going to enjoy themselves by praying to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So all of those are views of the scholars in which they mention. If you want to read more into it, you can go to the Kitab Al Nihaya fi Gharib al Hadith, or you can go to the Kitab Al Matla ala Abwab al Muqdi'. You can find it there, bi'idnillahi al kareem What's the virtue of this prayer? In Bukhari al-Muslim, min hadith Abi Hurairah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, man qama laylat al-qadri imanan wa ahtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. Wa man saama ramadana imanan wa ahtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. So what we take from this hadith is the person who stands up, laylatul qadri, the light of qadr, laylatul qadr, Iman and he stands with a state of Iman, faith in Allah wa Ta'ala, wahtisaban, waiting reward from Allah wa Ta'ala, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhami. The person will be forgiven for all of his sins. Okay, brothers and sisters. So, and anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan, Iman in faith of Allah wa Ta'ala, and wahtisaban, hoping to get reward from Allah wa Ta'ala, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhami. All of your sins will be forgiven for you. So Laylatul Qadr is a night that happens in the month of Ramadan, which we don't know what time within Ramadan it's located. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to speak about that as well. But since we don't know Laylatul Qadr, what, what night it is in Ramadan, in the last 10 nights, we don't know what it is, when it is. So a person should revive it by praying all those nights. And uh, uh, that might be, a, the chances will be very high for you to get hold of Laylatul Al Qadr. So if you do, and you pray from the first day of Ramadan until the last day of Ramadan. You pray every single night the prayer, the night prayer. What are you going to uh, receive, inshallah ta'ala? The chances of you getting Laylatul Qadr is very high. It's very high because you've been doing it every single night. And you've been doing it in this way because you've been doing it in Iman and Wahtisaba in order to get the forgiveness. What time is it? When do you pray Salatul Tarawih? I mean, when do you pray Qiyamul Layl? You pray Ma Bayna Salatul Isha Ila Tulu'il Fajri. You pray between Isha, okay, until Tulu'il Fajri. Tulu'il Fajri here means until Fajr. Uh, so from Salatul Isha until Salatul Fajr, you can pray Qiyamul Layl, whichever of that time you want. 
And this is a consensus amongst the ulama. There's an ijma' you can sahibu bidayat al mujtahid mentions it in the first volume, page 221. He can he transmits an ijma' in that, that there's no difference of opinion amongst the scholars. So the first thing I've explained to you is what does Salatul Taraweeh mean? Also, I spoke about the virtue of Salatul Taraweeh, which was the second. The third thing that I also spoke about is the timing of when do you pray this Salat, the Salat Taraweeh, when do you pray it? Now the next point I want to talk about is Adadu Raka'atiha. What are the number of Raka'at that you pray? How many Raka'at is this prayer? The most virtuous, inshallah ta'ala, description or the, the most virtuous form is that the person prays Salatu Layl, they pray Ihda Ashara Raka'ah, 11 Raka'ah, the Witr and Ihda Ashara Raka'ah, in the way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed it. It's come in Bukhari and also Muslim, which is for Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim, the two most authentic books after the Quran. From our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, may Allah be pleased with her and her father, that she said, Makana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yazidu fi Ramadana wala fi ghayrihi ala ihda ashara rak'ah yusalli arba'an fala tasal an husnihinna wa tulihinna thumma yusalli arba'an fala tasal an husnihinna wa tulihinna thumma yusalli thalatan. In this hadith, our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says, our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not one that would increase in Ramadan or in other than Ramadan more than 11 rak'ah. That's what he would pray. And then Aisha described that for us. And she said, radiallahu ta'ala anha, he would pray for, yani, yusalli arba'an, he would pray for. Aisha said, don't even ask about how beautiful and how lengthy it was the way he would pray alayhi salatu salam. Then he would pray another four. Aisha then said, don't even ask about فَلَا تَسَلْ عَنْ حُسْنِهِنَّ وَطُولِهِنَّ Don't even ask about the beauty of how he would pray those four again, which would make it eight now, صح? And then she said, ثُمَّ يُصَلِّ ثَلَاثًا He would then pray three. صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Also, uh, the Prophet would pray in what way? Like in, he would pray two, two, two. صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ That's the form in which he would pray it. Uh, as is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. He mentioned, he said, Sa'ala rajulun nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came and he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa huwa ala al-manbari. The Prophet was on the pulpit. He said to the Prophet, ma tara fi salatil layli. What's your, how do we pray salatul layl? What's the situation of salatul layl? And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, mathna, mathna. The person he prays what? Two, two, two. That's how we pray Salatu Al-Layl. فَإِذَا خَشِيَ الصُّبْحَ صَلَّى وَاحِدَةً If he then fears that Salatu Al-Fajr will enter, he just prays one. So carry on pray two, two, two until you fear Salatu Al-Fajr. فَأَوْتَرَتْ لَهُ مَا صَلَّى That would be your witr for all of that which you pray. That would be the odd number for all of that which you pray. So you have to have even, 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 and then finalize it with an odd number. Okay? Is it permissible for a person to increase in the raka'at? Are you allowed to pray more than 11? Yes, you are allowed to. It is allowed for a person to increase in the number and the person is allowed to increase these raka'at and these raka'at in Salatul Taraweeh have no restriction. Bi ijma'i al-ulama, scholars have transmitted a consensus. Ibn Abdul Bar transmitted a consensus in his Kitab al-Istidkar, the fifth volume, page 244. Imam al-Nawawiyu, in the Sharah Sahih Muslim, he transmitted the consensus of Al-Qadr Iyad in the sixth volume, in the Sharah Sahih Muslim, sixth volume, page 19. And the son of uh, uh, Imam Al-Iraqi, his son, he also transmits an ijma' in the Kitab Tarh Al-Tathrib, the fifth volume, page 30. That this Salah, uh, the Raka'at of Salah to at taraweeh that it doesn't have any had whatsoever, no restriction to it. It doesn't. Also, Ibn Abi Dunya narrated from Yunus ibn Ubaid that he said, Shahidtu, I participated. Uh, um, I participated. Uh, Shahidtu Nasa, I participated when the people qabla waq'at ibn al-Ash'at before the event of ibn al-Ash'at took place. Wa fi shahri Ramadan, and this was the month of Ramadan. Fakana ya ummum Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakrin, sahibu Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Umarin, Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr, the son of Abi Bakr al-Siddiq, 
Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr was also a companion. He was the one that entered upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was on his deathbed, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he saw in the mouth of Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr a miswak, and the Prophet followed his eyes with it. He kept looking at him, and then Aisha recognized that the Prophet wants that siwak. He wants a siwak to use for his mouth. Aisha went. She took the miswak from Abdul Rahman. She snapped it into a half. She gave Abdul Rahman the one, the part that he was using, and the other part. She took it and she bit on it and she made it so soft for the Prophet and she gave it to him alayhi salatu wasalam. Abdul Rahman was the person who was at the, there with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam at that moment. So he's a noble companion. So he was leading the people, this noble companion was Sa'id ibn Abil Hassani wa Marwan uh, al-Abdari فَكَانُوا يُصَلُّونَ بِهِمْ عِشْرِينَ رَكْعَةً They were leading the people how much? They were leading them 20 rak'ah. وَلَا يَقْنُطُونَ إِلَّا فِي النِّصْفِ الثَّانِي And they would only do the qunut in the second half. وَكَانُوا يَخْتِمُونَ And they would conclude القرآن مرتين The Qur'an they would conclude it twice. Also, uh, it was narrated that الحسن البصري he said كَانُوا يعني The people he met حسن البصري is a what? A tabi'i. He said كَانُوا يُصَلُّونَ عِشْرِينَ رَكْعَةً so if Hassan al-Basri is a tabi'i, and he says, Kanu they were, who's he referring to? Yani sahaba, he's referring to the companions. A tabi'i says, Kanu. He's referring to the sahabas. So the sahabas used to pray 20 rak'ah, he said, Hassan al-Basri. Atta also said, Adaraktu nasa. Atta again is a tabi'i. He met the companions. So he said, Adaraktu, I met an-nasa, yani the sahabas, wa hum yusalluna thalathan wa ishirina that they were praying 23 rak'atan bil witr with the witr. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah debunked those people who said that the Salat al-Taraweeh has a restriction and there's only 11, you can't increase in it. If you do, it's an innovation. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah responded to those people in his Majmu'u al-Fatawa, rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'a. He says, وَمَنْ ظَنَّ anyone who believes أَنَّ قِيَامَ رَمَضَانَ فِي عَدَدٌ مُؤَقَّتٌ عَنِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ لَا يُزَادُ فِيهِ وَلَا يُنْقَصُ مِنْهُ فَقَدْ أَخْطَأَ Ibn Taymiyyah says, anyone who believes that قِيَامُ رَمَضَانَ يعني صلاة التراويح that there is a restricted number to it. Anyone who believes that. That there is a restricted number from the Prophet ﷺ for it. That you can't increase in that number or you can't reduce in that number. Anyone who thinks that فَقَدْ أَخْطَأَ that person has done a mistake. Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Imam Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah Imam Min Aimmati Al Muslimin Alim A great jihbid He's saying this Rahimahullah Rahimahullah Rahmatan Wasi'a He said this in his Majmu'u Al Fatawa The 22nd volume Page 272 Also brothers and sisters Does it mean Because I said before Salat Al Taraweeh It's better to pray 11 Raka'ah Without a shadow of a doubt That's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed That's the best But does that mean All the time No no, Ibn Taymiyyah pointed something out very important in Majmu' al-Fatawa rahimahullahu rahimahullahu rahmatan wasi'a in the next page, in the 22nd volume, page 273, Ibn Taymiyyah mentions that if a person, he prays Salat al-Taraweeh, okay, uh, he doesn't pray 11, he prays more than 11, but what does he do? He lessens, يعني, because remember when you pray 20, Three, what happens, brothers and sisters? What happens is that you're not going to lengthen the prayer in the salah. Because remember, when it's 11, the, st the standing is longer. If someone, what he does is that he prays in 23, he does takhfif al qiyam, he lessens the qiyam, the standing, he lessens it on himself. And this makes him more enthusiastic, okay? And then it even allows his heart to be present more. Because remember, if you have to pray 11 and you have to stand for long, some people start, their legs start aching and those people can't focus and they can't ponder and contemplate on the Quran. Some people are like that. So they find hudur of the qalb, the presence of the heart, they find it when they make it more raka'at, but then they read less yani, in each raka'at, which is one juz, the same as the 11, but again, it's not concentrated in particular raka'at. Then Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, then now in this situation, because what's intended from the prayer is khushur and tadabbur and tafakkur in the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, فَصَلَاتُ بِوَحِدَةٍ وَعِشِرِينَ خَيْرٌ مِنْ صَلَاتِ بِيَحْدَةٍ عَشَرَ رَكْعَةٍ For him to pray 20 uh, rak'ah is better at this moment than for him to pray 11 rak'ah, okay? 
And that's a mas'ala people need to learn, which is al-amr yakhtalifu bi ikhtilaf al-musallin. The matter differs from one person to another person. Generally speaking, of course 11 is the best, lakin if the person doesn't find hudur al-qalb because he can't stand for that long and if he does stand for that long he won't contemplate he won't ponder then no doubt if there's another masjid that prays 20 like I go and pray in that masjid that is better for you also brothers and sisters Salatul Taraweeh is recommended to pray in the masjid وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامَ الْحَافِظَ أَبُوْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ الْحَاكِمَ أَنَّيْسَ أَبُورِيُّ The author of the kitab Al-Mustadrak he said فَصَلَاتُ التَّرَاوِيحِ فِي مَسْجِدِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ سُنَّةٌ مَسْنُونَةٌ Praying the Salatu Taraweeh in the masjid is a highly recommended sunnah Okay brothers and sisters Even now that we find brothers and sisters even though now we find that the time has been restricted Okay now your time has been restricted for the salah you're only allowed to pray 30 minutes in this country that we're in right now, it's still good, it's still better to do and go to the masjid for the overwhelming majority of Muslims. Lakin brothers and sisters, if you can pray longer at your house, and of course you know the Quran and you've memorized the Quran, and you can keep that momentum up from the beginning of Ramadan until the end, then la shaka wa la praying in your house is also good as well for you. Okay? Walidarik al Imam. Abu Dawood and Al-Tirmidhi narrated and also many of the great scholars of Ilm, Ahlul Hadith, they authenticated the Hadith Ta'ifatun min Ahlul Ilm that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said on the authority of Abu Dhar Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu the Prophet said Inna al-rajula, the man, either and the woman Ida sallam al-imam, if they pray with the imam Hatta yansarifa, until the imam finishes the prayer Husiba lahu qiyamu laylatin The reward that that person will receive is like he stood up the whole entire night May Allah make us from those people. And as I mentioned before, if the person is going to find more khushu' in praying in his house, and if the person is going to be benefiting more if he prays in his house, then of course it's better for him to pray at his house. It's better. Hafidh ibn Abdul Bar, Imam Hafidh Ahl al Maghrib, Hafidh al Maghrib, he was called. He said, Fal Afdal Indi, the best thing according to me, according to me, Hafidh ibn Abdul Bar is saying this, according to me, the best thing is if the person is going to find more khushu' in his house, uh, he said the best thing to me حينئذ, is حيث تصلح للمصلي نيته وخشوعه وإخباته وتدبر ما يتلوه في صلاته If he's going to find more khushu' in his house If he's going to ponder more in his house If the person is going to reap more benefits in his house Then without a shadow of a doubt It is better for him to go and pray in his house Also brothers and sisters it is recommended that the person does the witr with the imam. A lot of people, they pray eight raka'ah and they leave and they don't. Or they only pray four. Brothers and sisters, try your best to pray even the witr with the imam. Okay? If you are trying to then go home, pay attention here, brothers and sisters. If you pray salatu tarawiyah, and then you want to go home and pray more salah, you want to pray more, then don't do the witr, of course. Because of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, لا وترانی في ليلتي there's no two witters at one night. So if you want to go home after salah and you want to pray more, then of course don't do two witter. Okay? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith, مَنْ أَوْتَرَ أَوَّلَ اللَّيْلِ ثُمَّ قَامَ فَلْيُصَلِّ رَكْعَتَيْنِ رَكْعَتَيْنِ Okay? If a person wants to pray after witter, he prays two, two. يعني without doing witter. So there's a way to, to, to benefit from here. What is it, brothers and sisters? Let's say the Imam, you want to pray with the Imam. You, you want to get the reward of the hadith of the person who prays with the Imam hatta yansarifa until the Imam leaves. Husiba lahu qiyamu laylatin. You want to get that reward. So what do you do, brothers and sisters? What you do is when the Imam comes and he leaves the taraweeh, he finish, he does the witr. What you can do is you can stand up when he does a one raka'ah, stand up and pray, uh, make it two. And this is a hadith or a athar from Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas, it was mentioned from him, Man awtara awwala laylatin thumma qama fal yusalli raka'atain raka'atain. Pray two raka'at, two raka'at. Wa yajuzu, it is also permissible, brothers and sisters, for a person to recite from the Mus'haf if he needs to. Don't do it if you don't need to. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, it was mentioned, anna ghulaman laha kana ya ummuha fi ramadana fil mus'hafi. Aisha, she had a ghulam, a young boy, or a, a slave, her, her slave, and he used to lead her in the salah, okay? 
and he would read from the Mus'haf. And our mother Aisha was more knowledgeable than him, but this shows that women are not allowed to lead the prayer. Women are not allowed to lead the prayer. She's not allowed to. Aisha would have just said, I know more Quran than you, and I'm going to lead you in the prayer. He was reading from the Mus'haf. So this shows that the women are not allowed to lead the prayer. Also, what it shows is that a person is allowed to read from the Mus'haf if there's a need for it. Okay? Also, if there's someone behind the Imam, so there's an Imam who's leading the Salah, and there's no one who's memorized the Quran in that masjid, then one person, one person is allowed to take a Mus'haf and to follow with the Imam in case he does any mistakes. It was mentioned from Athabit al-Bunani. He said, كَانَ أَنَسٌ يُصَلِّي وَغُلَامُهُ يُمْسِكُ الْمُصْحَفَ خَلْفَهُ فَإِذَا تَعَايَا فِي آيَةٍ فَتَحَا عَلَيْهِ That Anas ibn Malik, his ghulam would be praying behind him. If he would do a mistake in a verse, he would open it for him. He would correct him and tell him what is right. But it's not permissible for the rest of the people to all bring their mushafs out. Everyone's got a mushaf. Why do you need to get a mushaf? You shouldn't get out a mushaf. Your job is to listen to the Imam by listening to his recitation. This has not been transmitted from the Salaf al-Salih, the Tabi'een, that every single person was, was carrying a Mus'haf or they were reading from a Mus'haf. Okay, my beloved brothers and sisters. Now that I've spoken about the Taraweeh, I want to speak, I want to speak about the Qunut, the Dua that's done. And I think it's very important that we, we inshallah ta'ala, speak about the Qunut and we have an understanding of what the Qunut is and reality is related to it. If you want brothers and sisters, you're leading the Salah uh, or you're praying at home by yourself, it is allowed for you to do Qunut from the first night of Ramadan until the last night of Ramadan. It's permissible for you. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, أَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُنُّتُ فِي الْوِتْرِ كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ قَبْلَ الرُّكُوعِ That which has been transmitted from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is that أَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُنُّتُ فِي الْوِتْرِ كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ قَبْلَ الرُّكُوعِ That he would do qunut in witr before the ruku' Okay? And if you want, you can do qunut after the ha. Huh? That after the first 15 days, after the first 15 days, second half of Ramadan, you're allowed to do it if you want. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, radiallahu anhuma, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. It was mentioned, أَنَّهُ كَانَ لَا يَقُنُوتُ إِلَّا فِي النِّصْفِ He would only start doing qunut, Abdullah ibn Umar, when it was nisf min Ramadan, half, 15, the first, he wouldn't do it the first 15 days. After that, he will start doing it. Abdullah uh, ibn Umar, both permissible. But in that, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says, قنوت الوتر من جنس الدعاء السائغ في الصلاة من شاء فعله ومن شاء تركه قنوت الوتر is from the جنس الدعاء is from الدعاء that is permissible سائغ في الصلاة in prayer anyone who wants to do it can do it and anyone who wants to leave it can leave it كما يخير الرجل أن يوتر بثلاث like, we can, like, like a person has the choice صلاة الوتر the person can do three أو خمس he can do five أو سبع نكد سبع وكما يخير the same way that the person is given a choice إذا أوتر بثلاث إن شاء فصل that the person if he wants to pray uh, if he wants to do witr what can he do he can pray all of them together all of it connected together without no taslim وإن شاء وصل uh, so if or if he wants فصل he would disconnect it and sometimes if he wants he can connect it he can do all of that it's permissible for him وكذلك يخير في دعاء القنوت the same way is that he's given the choice when it comes to the dua al qunut إن شاء فعله if he wants he can do it وإن شاء تركه if he wants he can leave it وإذا صلى بهم قيام رمضان فإن قنت في جميع الشهر he said if he does the whole entire مثنى فقد أحسن he does good وإن قنت في النصف الأخير and if he wants to do the second last half of the last half of رمضان فقد أحسن he's done good وإن لم يقنط if he doesn't want to do قنط at all فقد أحسن he's done good يعني don't make these issues into an argument back and forth. They're all fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Some people, they come into the messages and start saying, Qunut is bid'ah, don't do Qunut in them. Yani, akhi, At-tarawi wa ta'anni. Calm down. Take it easy. These are masail azima, big issues. They're big issues. Ulama have spoken about it. A'imma, who are more fearful of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, than you. People who are more grounded in knowledge than you are have spoken about these issues, looked at these ahadith and studied it and given us their pure understanding of Islam. So take it easy. If you've taken a view of a scholar here or a scholar there, 
then keep it to yourself. If you've done taqlid and you've blind followed a particular imam or a particular shuyukh, you've blind followed them in these issues, don't make it upon everybody else to follow you in your blind following. A blind follower cannot force others to blind follow. Because blind following is a what? It's a necessity. It's a necessity that was made permissible for you. Others are not blind followers. They're able to look at the masail, and they are able to look at the evidence and the proof, and they've come to this conclusion that this mas'ala is a mas'ala that is permissible, and it shouldn't be made stiff and hard onto the people. Okay, brothers and sisters, I used to see, subhanAllah, people go to Salat al-Taraweeh in, Ram in Ramadan in the Haram, and then when the Imam finishes the first 11 rak'ah, they start taking the people out of the masjid, saying, leave, 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 it's bid'ah, don't, don't. Al-taqillah, take it easy. Even at one point in my life, I believe more than 11 rak'ah, that it's innovation. I took the view of Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, rahimahullah, rahimahullah. But even with then, I mean, even then, when I had that opinion, I would never force people to leave the salah. I wouldn't. I want to go to people and say, hey, leave the haram, leave the haram. Kayf. If I take the opinion, it's mine. And I would leave. But to force others to take your opinion and impose it on them, as something a Muslim should really think and ponder over. And Imam Muhammad rahimahullah, he said, لا ينبغي للفقي أن يحمل الناس على مذهبه. It is not befitting for a faqi, a jurist, a person who studied fiqh, to impose and force his opinions onto other people. And it's very important. And have, يعني, think about it when you hear these great imams have given these verdicts. Take it easy. First of all, think. Abu Hanifa is a great imam in Aimat al Islam. Al Imam Malik is a great imam in Aimat al Islam. Al Imam al Shafi is a great imam in Aimat al Islam. Ahmad ibn Hanbal is a great imam in Aimat al Islam. When you hear they gave a verdict in a mas'ala, don't just jump to say, wrong, I don't care if he said it. Think, honey, take, take it in with ihtiram and love. If you disagree, do it. Like, understand that these people are not lightweight. They are great, great grounded scholars in Islam, in their deen. Okay? It is also recommended that the people who are praying behind the Imam, they stand behind the Imam. By the unanimous agreement that the scholars have transmitted in, on this istihbab, Ibn Taymiyyah transmitted that ijma' uh, that ittifaq, and also Ibn Qudam in his Kitab al-Mughni. And also saying Ameen behind the Imam when he's making the Qunut. Ameen, people say it. Okay? And pay attention, brothers and sisters. There's Mawadhi'u dua and there's Mawadhi'u thana. Distinguish one from the other. Don't confuse the two. A lot of people, they do that. They confuse two. They confuse a dua with a thana. Sometimes the shaykh is, is praising Allah Azza wa Jalla. That time you don't say Ameen. Okay? You don't. Uh, because it's not a dua you're making here. Just listen. So be silent. And when the Imam says the dua and he starts the dua, then say the Ameen. Before that, while he's praising Allah Azza wa Jalla, then just be silent and listen. Because This is not the place to say Ameen. It's not. Okay, and if you want to read more into this, you can go to the Majmu'a of Imam Al-Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala, which is the Sharh al-Muhaddab of Ishaq al-Shirazi, the third volume, page 502. Nawi expands on it more there. If you want to look into it even more by a great scholar by the name of Sheikh Bakr Abu Zayd rahimahullah, the author of the Kitab Hilyatul Awliya, the author of the Kitab Hilyatul Talib al-Ilm, sorry. He has a Kitab called Tasheeh al-Dua. If you go to page 423, Sheikh Bakr Abu Zayd rahimahullah, he expands on this issue and he talks about it in great details there, inshallah ta'ala. Also, brothers and sisters, the person who is praying uh, Salatul Taraweeh and is leading, he has the choice whether he wants to make the qunut before the ruku' or after the ruku'. He's got that choice because it's been transmitted from the Sahabas, both situations. It was mentioned, anna ibn Umar qanata fil witri qabla ruku'i. It was transmitted that uh, Ibn Umar, he done qunut before the ruku'ah. He did it before the ruku'ah. And it was transmitted from his father Umar that he did the opposite. Which was what? يَقْنُتُ فِي الْفَجِّ بَعْدَ الْرُكُوعِ Umar used to do it after the ruku'ah. Also, it is recommended that the person raises his hands in the dua al qunut And he follows it up with uh, uh, his uh, supplication. Uh, also, the people should follow the imam in that. So they should raise their, their hands. 
as is being transmitted from Abu Uthman. He said, Salaitu, I prayed Khalfa Umar ibn al Khattabi. I prayed behind Umar ibn al Khattabi. Rabbi Allah anhu faqara a thamanina ayata min al Baqarah. Umar read 80 verses from Surah al Baqarah. Waqana tabada rukuri. And then he did qunut after the ruku'. And he raised his hand so high until I saw the whiteness of his armpits. And he raised his voice in supplication. He raised his voice with the dua until the people behind the wall they could they could hear him. Uh, Imam Al Bayhaqi narrated that in his kitab, uh, in his Sunan, uh, Imam Al Bayhaqi Sunan Al Kubra, Hadith. 3149 bi sanadin sahih with authentic chain of narration also has been transmitted from abi raja al utaridi he said ra'aytu ibn abd ra'aytu ibn abbas yamuddu bi dab'ayhi fi qunut salat al ghadati idha kana bil basra same thing abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu and the person brothers and sisters can make as much dua as they wish whatever they want to ask begging allah tabarak wa ta'ala walidhalika it has been transmitted from the Sahaba's dua. Ubaidullah uh, ibn Umayr, he said, يأثر عن عمر بن الخطاب في القنوت. He's transmitting regarding Umar ibn al-Khattab in the Qunut. أنه كان يقول that Umar ibn al-Khattab used to say, اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وألف بين قلوبهم وأصلح ذات بينهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم العن اللهم العن كفرة أهل الكتاب الذين يكذبون رسلك ويقاتلون أولياءك اللهم خالف بين كلمتهم وزلزل أقدامهم وأنزل بهم بأسك الذي لا ترد عن القوم المجرمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إنا نستعينك ونستغفرك ونثني عليك ولا نكفرك ونخلع ونترك من يفجرك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم آه اللهم إياك نعبد ولك نصلي ونسجد وإليك نسعى ونحفد نرجو رحمتك ونخشى عذابك إن عذابك إن عذابك بالكفار ملحق He used to say this and some of the riwayat mentions ونخاف عذابك He used to say This is the dua of Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه If the person he lengthens the قنوتنا as long as he's not making it harmful for the people, nah, there's no problem in that as well. Ay, naam, if, the person, if the imam lengthens the, the qunut, he makes it long, as long as la ala as long as he's not making it hard on the Muslims, فلا بأس, there's no harm in this issue. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu kana yaqnut bi qadli ma yaqra'u rajul mi'ata ayatim. It was mentioned that Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar ibn Khattab, he used to do the qunut, that which is equivalent to a hundred verses. That's lengthy, right? Abdul ibn Abi Shayban mentions that in his Musannaf. Okay. Also, it is recommended that the person leads the people uh, in his dua and he makes yani yustahabu and yusalli al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's recommended that the person does salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dua and he makes dua for the Muslims as much as he's able to. Okay. ولذلك we mentioned the dua of Umar ibn Khattab what he made and what he asked Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala for the Muslims also what is disliked brothers and sisters is a sajah a sajah is that the person tries to rhyme in his in his dua it's been transmitted from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma it's been transmitted from him uh, as Imam al-Bukhari narrated انظر السجع من الدعاء فاجتنبه فإني أعهدت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه لا يفعلون إلا ذلك يعني هي لا يفعلون إلا ذلك الاجتناب stay away from سجع some people they, if they want to make dua they always want to rhyme it and you know stay away from all of that if it happens to rhyme no problem but, uh, and if it's natural for you no problem but if you don't try to force yourself to do that also brothers and sisters Stay away from beautifying at tagani fi dua. It's also best to avoid it and stay away from it. It was mentioned that uh, Ibn al Humam al Hanafi, the great scholar, al uh, Kamal Ibn al Humam al Hanafi, he has a sharh, he's, he's got a kitab called Fathul Qadir, Sharh al Kitab al Hidayati. And the kitab Sharh al Hidayati is a sharh of Kitab al Bidayah by Burhan al Marghinani, rahimahullah ta'ala. 
that he kitab al-hidayah okay so the kitab of Fathul Qadir is a sharh of al-hidayah fi sharh al-bidayah and al-hidayah is a sharh of what of the kitab al-bidayah of the author he, he, al-barghinani rahimahullah ibn al-humam al-halafi he mentioned that this is an innovation he says kama he, this is, he's talking from himself. He said, كما لا أرى تحرير النغم في الدعاء كما يفعله القراء في هذا الزمان يصدر ممن فهم معنى الدعاء والسؤال وما ذلك إلا نوع لعب فإنه لو قدر في الشاهد سائل حاجة من ملك, من ملك أدى سؤاله وطلبه تحرير النغم فيه من الرفع والخفض والتغريب والرجوع كالتغني نسب البتة إلى قصد السخرية واللعب إذ مقام طلب الحاجة التضرع للتغني He makes a very powerful point which is that when a person wants to ask someone for something there's no beautification that should be done and he actually says this is a mockery that when a person is asking and supplicating to Allah that they recite it like that and they follow الرفع والخفض goes up and down and تغريب and this and that no, he says, maqamu talab. When you're at a place where you're asking, you do tadarru, you humble yourself for Allah wa ta'ala, and you stay away from yani reciting in that way. And it's something I came across later in my life. It's a very powerful statement. Uh, so it's something we should, inshallah ta'ala, now that we know, should follow it, inshallah ta'ala. Also, it's not permissible after the dua, some people in the salah, you see them wiping their faces. There's no evidence for that. The narrations and the evidences are weak in that regard, especially not in the salah. الإمام البيهقي أبو بكر البيهقي he said أما مسح اليدين بالوجه عند الفراغ من الدعاء فليس فلست أحفظه he said أبو بكر البيهقي he said as for wiping your hands on your face after you finish the dua I said I don't know this I haven't seen this عن أحد من السلف في دعاء القنوت when they made the dua القنوت and then he said فالأولى ألا until he said until he said فأول فالأولى ألا يفعله it's stay away from doing this ويقتصر على ما فعله السلف دو ذات وش السلف ديد رضي الله عنهم من رفع اليدين دون مسحهما دون مسحهما بالوجه في الصلاة without wiping your face your hands over your face okay ليلة القدر which is the last point إن شاء الله تعالى that I want to speak about brothers and sisters the ليلة القدر the virtue of it is the hadith that uh, الإمام البخاري narrated and also an Imam Muslim in Hadith Abi Hurairah. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَنْ يَقُمْ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرًا لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Anyone who stands up, Laylatul Al-Qadri, and prays with these two qualities, إِيمَانًا, believes in Allah, وَاحْتِسَابًا, and hoping for reward, that person will be forgiven for their sins. Hafidh ibn Abdul Barrin, he said, وَجُمْلَةُ الْقَوْلِ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ أَنَّهَا لَيْلَةٌ عَظِيمٌ شَأْنُهَا وَبَرَكَتُهَا وَجَلِيلُ قَدْرُهَا وجليل قدرها هي خير من ألف شهر تدرك في هذه الأمة ما فاته من طول أعمال من سلف من قبلهم من الأمم في العمل والمحروم من حرم من حرم خيرها ليلة القدر it is a night great full of baraka honorable night better than a thousand months and he then mentions this ummah, through it, through Laylatul Qadr, they will reach the lifespan of the previous nations. Remember the previous nations, they lived for thousands of years, hundreds of years. Laylatul Qadr is one night that's equal to 83 years. But many of us, Allah Alam, can live for that long. Imagine if you got 10 years of Ramadan and every year you got Laylatul Qadr. You do the calculation. It's many years of your life you've, you're going to get, right? Ain't also, when is Laylatul Qadri? The Sahih, the strongest opinion, inshallah ta'ala, wa ilm inda Allah is that anna tantaqilu fil ashri al awakhiri min Ramadan. It moves around. It's not stuck to a particular time, but it's in the last 10 days. That's for sure. It's in the last 10 days, but it moves within the last 10 days. So if last year it was on the 27th, it doesn't mean necessarily that this year is going to be on the 27th. And that is based on the hadith of Aisha. She said, radiallahu anha, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يجاور في العشر الأواخر من رمضان ويقول تحر ليلة القدر في العشر الأواخر من رمضان He used to say look for it in those last 10 days of Ramadan Also based on the hadith of Aisha as well رضي الله تعالى عنها where she said 
كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر the last ten days of Ramadan when he would enter شد مزاره وأحيا ليله وأيقظ أهله in the last ten days would enter the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he would exert a lot of effort he would revive his nights and he would make sure that he wakes his family also it's recommended that the person increases in dua in the salah and outside the salah and they ask Allah تبارك وتعالى about what من خير الدنيا والآخرة the good of this world and the hereafter increase in it in the salah and outside the prayer you can ask any dua you like but try to make the dua which is يعني asking Allah for the خير of this dunya and the hereafter now some of you might come to me and say to me but why don't you just mention the hadith of Aisha رضي الله عنها when she said Allah ما إنك عفو وتحب العفة فعفو عني أما فعفو عني okay why don't you mention that hadith that hadith which talks about تخصيص ليلة القدر بدعاء no evidences have come in any hadith that are صحيح in this matter. Al Imam Sheikh Muqbil ibn Hadi al Wadi has a kitab called A Hadith Mu'alla Zahiruha Sihha. 439, if you go to it, he mentions that this hadith is disconnected and it's not authentic. Hadith Aisha, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Laylatul Qadr, he asked her that she, the Prophet, sorry, told her to say this dua. That hadith is not sahih and it's not authentic. Okay? It's not authentic. So all that which is, you should say is any, you can say that dua, no problem. It's good. Say it. And also all the other du'as, say it, of course. But the hadith that the Prophet said is to Aisha is not sahih. Okay? Also from the signs of it is that which has come in the hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'bin. She's, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from the signs of Laylatul Qadr. Is that the Prophet said, Akhbarana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ka'ab, Abu Ubay ibn Ka'bin, he said that the Prophet told us, Anna tatlu'u yawma'idin la shu'a'a laha. The sun will come out that day without any rays. Okay? Okay? For the, so this, that's the sign of Layla to Al-Qadr, the people will realize it the next day, that that's how it is. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdi ashadu la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Ramadan with AMAU. Make this the best Ramadan you've ever had by joining our exclusive online community. With regular private classes, digital resources, weekly accountability sessions, and daily Qur'an gatherings. This is one opportunity you definitely do not want to miss. So sign up now at amau.org forward slash Ramadan and we look forward to welcoming you on the other side.